I really can't explain what I'm about to say to you next. And I shared this with Emma when we met on Monday. But when I saw the news of J. Michael's passing, somehow I knew that I would be standing here before you today. And as I thought about what I might say to you to comfort a grieving community, to provide hope for a grieving family, immediately I was reminded of a quote of Jesus that's recorded in the gospel according to John. So it's John 15, 13, where Jesus says this, no one has greater love than this to lay down his life for his friends. And I'm convinced that there are two reasons that this is the verse of scripture that God brought to my mind. First, this verse tells us that love's fabric is not made of purely emotion, but of sacrifice. The one who truly loves is the one who is willing to sacrifice for the benefit of others. Certainly, this was true of J. Michael, was it not? I'm old enough to know that the life of a first responder, the life of a firefighter, is a life of sacrifice. Sacrifice for others in life, and if necessary, sacrifice for others in death. Whatever the case may be, a firefighter motivated by love is always ready. J. Michael certainly was. But secondly, I believe that God placed this scripture on my heart and in my mind to remind us all of the greatest demonstration of love the world has ever seen in a man named Jesus Christ as he walked up a hill called Calvary and was nailed to a Roman cross to bear the weight of your sin and mine. You may know this message as the message of the gospel. You and I were born into sin, alienated from God, and not a thing we could do to rectify that relationship. But in his kindness and love, Jesus became like we are, fully God, but in human flesh, to do for us what we could never do for ourselves in a million years, to live righteously according to God's standard. And that righteousness is what made Jesus the acceptable sacrifice, the only one that God would accept to pay the penalty for the price of our sin. Love personified is in nail-scarred hands and blood that ran down the cross of Calvary. And if the story were to end there, it wouldn't be enough. But Jesus' resurrection three days later was God's amen to the very last words that Jesus said on the cross of Calvary. It is finished. No more work to be done. No more price to be paid. The sin of the world was born by the Savior, and now all who would confess and submit to believe in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection in their place not only would be made right with God here on earth, but also into eternity. You're going to hear in just a little while. That's exactly what J. Michael believed. And my prayer is that maybe, just maybe, someone in this room today, someone watching on our live stream will for the very first time believe that somehow, someway, when Jesus cried out, it is finished on the cross, it counted for them. The great and late basketball coach, Jim Valvano, in his famous speech at the ESPYs just before he died, He said that each of our days should include three things, laughter, thought, and tears. Participate in these three, he said, and you'll have a full day. So I'm confident today that we'll be provoked to deep thought as we remember the life and the sacrifice 
of J. Michael. And I'm even confident that we'll be provoked to think about our lives in the manner in which we're living them. I'm also confident that we'll be moved to tears as we remember the loss of a husband and a father and a son and a brother and an uncle and a friend. So where does laughter come in? Where can we find laughter today? I've been told if you knew J. Michael, you don't have to think very far to a memory that will provoke some laughter. But I would recommend, even in a service like this, where laughter might be hard to come by, we replace laughter with celebration, with honor. So in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to do something that might be a little out of the ordinary. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet and celebrate J. Michael's life. And while it might seem a little odd, consider for a second the things that we celebrate in our culture. We celebrate a man hitting a baseball over a fence. We celebrate a man shooting a basketball through a hoop. We celebrate a man carrying a football across a goal line. And even in some cases, we refer to those men as heroes. What about a man who dedicated his life to service? What about a man who paid the ultimate price while doing the very thing he swore to do? What about that kind of a hero? If you ask me, I think that's worthy of celebration. So friends, in the middle of our thought and maybe even in the middle of our tears, will you stand with me in this room, in the overflow room where you're watching online and celebrate the life of James Michael Muller? I would invite you to remain standing and sing with me praise to our God this morning, uh, this afternoon. Amazing grace. Let's lift our voices together.
Good morning. I've uh, spent the week having issues with Jay. This is not fun. I'm doing it wrong, apparently. Uh, but we're going to get there, I promise. I'm, I'm standing in front of you at the weakest moment of my entire life. And that's okay, because uh, you're doing the same thing I am. And we're here for each other. That's a big part of it. It's okay to be weak right now. That's what they're telling me. So I'm going to go with that for now. I'm going to stumble. I'm going to pause, probably cry. So bear with me. Uh, we'll all do this together, okay? This is not the most comfortable place for any fireman. Suits and speeches is not what we do. I feel sure looking at this room that if smoke was banked down about a foot from the floor, we'd be a lot better off right now. That's just the way we roll. So thank you for putting it up. Um, this is where we're supposed to be, though. This is where Jay has put us, and we're going to do him right. I want to thank our Irmo community, the two counties we reside in, our state, our fire departments across the nation. It's been unbelievable, the support for the IFD family. Uh, I, I can't even describe it. It is just something I've never seen before. Um, I hope the governor doesn't mind me stealing this, but a couple weeks ago, he pointed out uh, in a crowd that I was with that uh, the patriotism in this state per square inch is greater than anywhere in the nation, and I agree. It's fantastic. Um, to my IFD family, uh, all of you and the spouses, I don't know what going forward looks like yet. We're going to figure it out together. It's not my plan, but it'll be our plan, all of us. But we're going to get there, I promise. So stick with us. It's going to be a heck of a run, but uh, we're going to show them something. All right? Yep. Good. So James Michael Muller. J. Michael. J. Muller. Dude. Whichever one of those you use, it makes you smile. I just saw everybody smile. It, it just works. I don't know what the deal is, but you just say it. And I think if you watch the video, you, you understand why. Um, his dedication and passion, we know, is unmatched. Um, you could have done without me, and we could just play Facebook for about three hours if you guys want to do that. We could, that that's another way to capture what he has done and how he's affected us. His devotion to the fire service uh, could be seen, honestly, from the firehouse to the fire ground. It just, it just oozed out of him. And he had a way of doing it that wasn't, it was in your face, but it wasn't in your face. When he popped into my office at 7 in the morning, already sweating, saying, Chief, you do a three-miler with me? I'm like, no, Jay, I'm not, it's Monday, I can't, that's not in me, I got emails and stuff, so I got to do chief things, but I started thinking about it, and uh, I always hated the word given 110%. I just barely got out of algebra, but it doesn't add up. It's 100%. It's just what it is. You can't add to that in, in my simple mind, but the more I thought about it this week, Jay had the 100%. He brought 110 so he could give the rest to us when he came to work. If I came in at 90, I left at 100. You can guarantee it. And that was his kind of magic potion on everybody. He had the extra than the 100, which was fantastic. And he shared it with all of us. If you've met him, if you know him, you probably got some of that in your pocket too. So hang on to that. Um, I, I wondered all week where he got his passion from. And uh, I was really proud of the fire service that, that that's something we did, you know. We, he was one of us. And all week I spent with his family, I realized it didn't come from the fire department. He got it from home. He got it from his family. We were the vehicle to make it happen. It's a hell of a vehicle, I'm telling you. It was, the combination just worked. We didn't raise him, but he got to the point where he found us and knew what to do with everything that you guys did for him. And I thank you. We plan on giving that back to you for the rest of your lives, if that's okay. You can't say no. It's just part of what we do. Um, Emma has asked to keep it short and simple and swift, and I thank you so much for that. 
Um, I'm going to leave you with something. Um, about three decades ago, when I was a 28-year-old lieutenant at a fire conference in Myrtle Beach, uh, a crowd similar to this, all firefighters for the most part, and uh, our state chaplain, Monsignor Roth, um, pretty sure he was from somewhere above the Mason-Dixon line, so you got to use that when I tell you this. Uh, he looked at us all out there, and he said, about the fire service, and I remember, remembered it to this day. He said, don't come into the fire service thinking you're going to doing it some big favor by you being in it. He said, you're standing on the shoulders of 300 years of history, fire service history. He said, the best, the best you can ever think of doing is to not tarnish the badge and leave it a little bit better than you found it. J. Michael did that, and he's going to expect us to do the same thing. All right? Thank you. Well, he said he was going to keep it short. I'm a pastor, and I'm suffering from undelivered speech. My name's Kermit Morris. I'm a pastor. But more important than that, I was J. Michael's grandfather. I was getting dressed this morning to come, reached in the closet, and pulled out my black suit, laid it on the bed, and I heard J. Michael say, Paul, I told you no black. He didn't want that us to be dreary and mournful and he wanted us to celebrate his life and I think that's what we're here to do as a pastor it's always been my philosophy that a funeral service is not for the one that passed away it's for you guys family and you're part of the fire service you are family and you will always be family Thank you, each and every one of you, for what you do. The way you live. My grandson, J. Michael, I think you'd agree, lived a full life. He was full of life. One might even say it was a life well lived. And how do you say that about somebody 25 years old? But he did. He lived a full life. John chapter 10, verse 10 said, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and life to the full. Let me go back a little ways. It was about nine years ago. And Jay and I sat in his house one morning, tears rolling down both of our cheeks, and he looked at me and he said, Paul, if something happened to me, I don't know where I'd go. And we began to talk about it. And we began to share. And through the tears that day, both of our tears, Jay asked Jesus to come into his life and save him. And he did right then. Scripture says, that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus took control of Jay's life. And Jay knew he was God's own. And death was not final. In fact, it was just the beginning of every day with Jesus. You see, I have a philosophy that I believe that God has a plan for every single person's life. And we're never, ever going to be happy until we know what that plan is for our life. Now, how did I come to that conclusion? Psalm 139, verse 13 through 15 said, For you created me, talking about God, in my own inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. In other words, he put in the personality we have when we were still in the womb. 
He gave us our, our natural abilities while we were still in the womb. And then he goes on and said, My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. You see, the secret, whether you're 25 or 77, is to live a full life is to know God and to know his plan for you. I believe Jay knew God's plan for his life. And folks, he was living it every single day as a fireman. That was God's plan all along. When you live in God's plan, you live life to the full. And that's exactly what Jay was doing. He was living life to the full. He was living his dream, his calling. Usually we say, well, that's something the pastors have is a calling. No, that's God's plan for your life and my life. It's every one of our calling. And finding it and living it is living to the max. Ladies and gentlemen of the fire service, your calling is a dangerous one. There are no guarantees. It's dangerous. When you see danger, you know the cliche, but it's not a cliche, it's a fact. When there's danger, you guys go running toward it. When all the rest of us are running away from it. That's who you are. That's who you are. John 15, 13, the pastor read earlier, greater love has no man than to lay down one's life for his friends. Every time that phone rings, that call comes in, that bell goes off, you guys respond. You don't think about it. You respond. You go. You know that in that burning building is a friend that you laid down your life for. You know that in that car wreck, there's a friend. You know that that person that's collapsed is a friend. The call may be dangerous, and you know you're calling, and you go because there is a friend waiting and hoping you get there. What is life? Some may say it's from the time you're born to the time you die. But listen to me, that's not life. That's just a prep school to teach us how we live every day so we'll be prepared to live with Jesus in eternity. That's what Jay did. Now, my wife said she'd be disappointed if I didn't have an acrostic in this. So life is my acrostic. L-I-F-E. Living intentionally for eternity. That's life. As a parent, as a grandparent, as a great-grandparent to Cole, I always wanted to be a hero to my children, to my grandchildren, to my great-grandchildren. But it wasn't long as J. Michael became an adult that I realized I was never going to be his hero because he was my hero. My hero. But you know what, guys? That's what you are. You're my hero also. You're my hero and you're my family. That's how you roll. But what would J. Michael say to you today if he could talk to you? Allow me to use his words. It's an oath. It's a commitment. So live it. Live it. Pastor, I don't know about you, I could have used him in some of my growth rallies that I wanted to do. If he would just came out and talked to some of my church members, it would have been great. It's an oath. It's a commitment. Live it.
For J. Michael, that's how he lived his entire adult life, committed to really being a firefighter. And not just an ordinary firefighter, a step above, because he wanted to be the best, always to be the best. He knew the sacrifices for his job. You know what? You know it also. You know the sacrifices you have to do. You know what you have to get done. You know the countless stories of how he trained, how he pushed himself and his peers every day to get better. Every single day, I think he would want us not to ever forget 523, 526, 23, the fire at Tropical Ridge Apartments. He loved being there in that place that took his life because that's where his team was. That's where you guys were. He loved it. He loved his friends. He loved his family. He would also urge you to get better every day at what you're doing. To get better every single day at what we do as the firefighters. He, he said, to me, that means we keep training. We keep training. If he, he was here, he would say, don't let the opportunity pass us by. In the words of J. Michael Muller, it's an oath. It's a commitment. So live it. All of you in this room, you dedicate yourself to service and to sacrifice. And guess what? You're making a difference in people's lives every day, in everything you do. Keep it up. I think this story I'm going to tell you in closing here fits J. Michael to a T. It was after a particularly bad storm on the northeast coast. And people begin to leave their houses and come out of their sheltered places to assess the damage. There was one older gentleman standing there, and he was just watching, looking out over the beach. And on the beach was literally thousands of starfish everywhere. And they had been washed up from that nor'easter. And they were just out of the reach of the waves. So they were literally dying on that beach because they couldn't get back into the water. A little boy, about 12 years old, came out there and he saw him. And he began to walk along that beach. He'd pick over, bend over and he'd pick up one and he'd look at it. If it was alive, he'd throw it back into the water. And he kept doing that over and over and over again. And that older man came up to him and he put his arm around that little boy and he said, Son, what you're doing is commendable. It really is, but look, there are thousands of starfish on this beach. It can't possibly make any difference whatsoever. The little boy pulled away from him after he thought for a moment. He walked over and he picked up one of those starfish, looked at it, turned to that older man and said, Sir, it makes a difference to him, and threw it back in the water. What you do every day makes a difference in people's lives. Every day. J. Michael Muller, you made a huge difference in people's lives. To all you firemen that are hearing my voice, you make a difference every day. You are all heroes, and you're my hero. J. Michael is not physically in this place today because on 5 26 23, he left this earth and went to his home in heaven. I believe he would say to you right now, you guys that he loved, you guys, because you're in the service of the fire company, he would say to you right now, if he could, make sure you have a right relationship with God. Because I'm going to be right here waiting on you to get here. Because we're all going to be there one day. We don't know what happened. And I'm going to close with this. On Friday afternoon, 
when J. Michael left this earth and went to heaven. We don't know what happened in heaven. We know that Jesus is always there to greet you when you go in. But I think in J. Michael's case, if you let me dream a little bit, that every hero that went before him met him at the gates and welcomed him. There were some of those high fives at that time. They were, there was a great reunion. And he didn't even know all of them. But he knew some of them. And they knew him. And there was a great reunion taking place. But when all of that was over with, I believe J. Michael looked at them and said, and you know what's coming. Go get your gear on. I got a new workout I want you to try. Thank you. As we come to the conclusion of our service, will you pray the Lord's Prayer along with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The life of a firefighter is closely associated with the ringing of the bell. As he begins his hours of duty, the bell starts each day off. And throughout that day and night, each alarm is sounded by a bell, which calls him to fight fires and place his life in jeopardy for the good of his fellow man. And when the fire is out and the alarm has come to an end, it is a ringing of three rounds of five that signal the end of his duty.
171 Driver County. 171 Driver County. 171 Driver County. All county units. Firefighter J. Michael Muller has answered his final alarm. Firefighter Muller, thank you for your service. We'll honor your oath and take it from here. May you rest in peace.